If you've ever liked an item of clothing so much, but now it has become faded or frayed and you really, really would like another one like it, uh, you may follow this video and I will show you how. This is a men's sleeping shorts that has become really frayed around the edges and um, I wanted to make a new one. And this is what it looks like before undoing all the seams. What you need to do is carefully unpick all the seams, every single seam, including a careful removal of the elastic at the waistband. When you've unpicked all the seams, you take an iron and you iron the whole thing absolutely flat because you want to use this original garment as a pattern for your new one. Because a sleeping shorts, or any shorts for that matter, has two backs and two fronts, all you need to do is un make sure you've unpicked one back and one front. You don't need all four because you are going to cut two of each one. Here we have the back piece laid out onto the paper that I'm going to make a new pattern piece from. Once I've drawn pencil lines around the outer edges of the old uh, piece of shorts, um, this is what it looks like on paper. I've added pattern markings, which I will talk about a little later in the video. Here we have the front of the shorts uh, placed on the pattern paper, and I'm going to make my pencil markings, and you will see it in the next picture. This is the front of the shorts already marked out on the pattern piece. Finally, both my pattern pieces have been cut out on paper. In what you need to do is take your pencil and draw along the side of your ironed out piece from the shorts. And basically, you are going to cut it out. So your piece, your uh, final paper pattern piece will look like that. So what I have done on this paper pattern piece is to mark out exactly where my elastic casing is going to be folded over. And I d determined that by the actual um, the place where the elastic was on the original shorts. So if you look there, after I've ironed it out, you can obviously see the stitching line, and that is where I have made my pencil line, indicating the elastic casing. But if you notice, you'll see that my paper pattern is uh, longer than what is required on the original pattern piece. And this is because, if you look at the original shorts, you'll see that the elastic is a stitched on piece of elastic. But what I really want to do is make a channel, which, was, which will look like that eventually, um, onto, the, onto the new shorts. And in this way, I can actually insert an elastic rather than stitch it onto the shorts itself. It's a much easier process, especially if you are a beginner. So basically, I've added on a piece which will be enough to accommodate the elastic that I want as well as to make a little turn over just to make sure that it doesn't fray. I have done exactly the same with the back piece of the shorts. Now it's not always necessary to make a paper cutout for your pattern but if you notice this shorts, the old one, is already frayed and torn on the edges and it's going to distort um, the pattern if I were to cut this out onto new fabric hence I need I needed to make a paper pattern and if you can see this line here I'm, I basically corrected the line because um, when I ironed it out I couldn't get exactly all the creases where the elastic had uh, uh, sort of creased the, the fabric so just to talk more about the pattern instructions that I've included onto this pattern piece here. 
obviously you can see that I have the section which is going to become my the casing for my elastic that I'm going to insert into the shorts I have labeled it men's sleep shorts size extra large which is basically what it is I will then fold this pattern and keep it into my file for future use and it's therefore a good idea to label it so that you know and you know what it's what it's about and what it's for and also what size it is and so you can remake the shorts in future what I often also do is I cut a piece of the, the new fabric that I'm going to use and I either staple it or tape it on just a tiny little square um, and so this reminds me that uh, you know this is the shorts that I made and it's just an additional uh, piece of information that will help you in future um, what you notice down the middle of my uh, pattern piece is an arrow running from the top to the bottom and basically this indicates fabric line how you're going to cut it so um, basically I'm going to lie the fabric you know which is and it's going to sort of lie in accordance with this line the other words that I have on this pattern and I'm not sure if you can actually see it I've written there this is the back and cut two so basically for the shorts pattern um, you will have two back pieces and you will have two front pieces right and you will stitch them together which I'm going to uh, demonstrate after cutting out the pattern which represents the grain line this arrow going up and down so basically what it means is any fabric is woven with threads going across this way and threads going across that way this grain line which is called the warp usually indicates the strongest part of the fabric so you're not going to get any stretch going in an up and down direction and therefore most fabric patterns are cut along the grain line okay the grain line also runs parallel to what is called the self edge self edge okay so this is the part of the fabric where when the weaving is done the fabric is fixed and kind of uh, made firm on on the edge so that it doesn't um, you know distort and so on so this is basically what this middle line uh, is all about and when you are cutting your pattern if you have a paper pattern that you're going to cut out onto fabric always be aware of which in which direction your grain line is going to go and in which direction you are going to have to cut your um, fabric usually you use pins to fix your pattern onto the fabric that you are going to cut out all right but I find it a bit tedious and I sometimes worry whether I will actually pick up both um, sides of the fabric and so I sometimes use uh, my own method I have a few rocks and I place them onto the fabric piece sometimes I will take a saucer an upturned saucer or a bowl or whatever just to hold everything firm in this case I am going to put a pin here because I don't want the fabric to move while I am cutting it out and so I will now proceed to cut uh, the shorts out following carefully along the line of the paper pattern piece so this is almost completely cut out this is just the last side that I am cutting out now what I did not mention prior to cutting out was that the pattern piece says cut two and the, the easiest way to cut two is obviously to fold your fabric over and because I when you stitch uh, two pieces together two pieces of fabric together you always stitch them with the right sides facing so what I have done with the fabric is ensure that when I fold the fabric over in this way and I'll use this as an example oops when you fold your fabric over 
you ensure that the right side is on the inside which means that once you've cut out your piece it's ready to stitch because the two right sides are facing so you'll notice that uh, the, my pattern piece is cut two. If I remove my pattern piece, you will notice that I have two pieces of the shorts. So I have my two um, back pieces already cut. Now I'm going to follow the same procedure for the two fronts. It says front cut two. Um, I've placed my pattern piece on the fabric and Please note that my fabric has already been folded over this way with the two right sides uh, facing each other. So let us begin with that. And there are my two front pieces. So to ensure that I uh, know exactly where my channel is going to go, I want to have some kind of indication on my fabric piece. And so what I'm going to do with my paper pattern, I'm going to just cut a slit in the paper on both sides, obviously not with my fabric uh, scissors and I'm going to use that little slit just to mark my pattern piece um, just to let me know where my elastic channel is going to be so I'm using a piece of tailor's chalk and that is what I'm going to do so that gives me and what I could do if I wanted was to take my ruler thereafter because remember that this is the wrong side of the fabric and I could actually mark off onto the fabric with the tailor's chalk where my elastic channel is going to fold over. A good idea also, you know, especially if you are a beginner and you don't exactly know what a front of a shorts looks like, and it's easy really, um, once you get used to it, you'll find that the the curve on the front of a shorts is much less uh, deep. So for example, if I were to show you the, the curve of the back of the shorts, it's a lot more deep, all right? It has much more of a scoop. So you'll notice this is the curve of the back piece. It, scooped much more and I'll put this one on top of it so that you can see so this is the front you'll notice that the scoop of the front is much uh, uh, sort of lower than the scoop for the back so what I was trying to say is for a beginner the best thing for you to do is to try to mark your um, fabric pieces remembering that this is the wrong side the tailor's chalk does wash out very easily and it can in fact just be rubbed off so basically what I'm going to do is put an F on it here and I know that this these are the two fronts if you still want to not confuse yourself anymore you can do exactly the same on the other side put an F for front and you can do the same with the back and remember that you have the wrong side of the face of the fabric facing you and so I will put a B here telling me that this is the back and I will do the same with the other side um, I don't necessarily do this anymore but it's just a tip for beginners so that you don't get confused and you know stitch a, a back and a front together for example 